In today's Community Focus, we continue our conversations with the candidates for Rhode Island's second congressional district after Congressman Jim Langevin announced his surprise retirement. Today, I'm joined live in studio by Democrat Joy Fox. Joy, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. All right, Joy, 60 seconds or less. Why do you want to represent Rhode Island in Congress? Thank you. Um, I would like to represent Rhode Island in Congress because I absolutely love where I live. I love the state of Rhode Island, and I want my community well represented in Congress. I'm also running for my family and families like mine who are good people committed to living here and raising their families here, and they need government to work for them, not against them. I know that there are tremendous, we're facing tremendously challenging times right now, um, and families in our district deserve a representative in Congress who will fight for them, fight for them every day on every issue, including fighting to lower prescription drug costs, fighting to provide more supports and services for our family caregivers um, who are struggling to keep their loved ones at home, and fighting to put this pandemic behind us once and for all. Uh, that means creating more jobs and moving our economy forward in a fair and just way so it works for everyone. Right now you are the CEO of Clarendon Group. It's a strategy and communications firm. People might know your name because you've often worked behind the scenes for people like Congressman Langevin and former Governor Gina Raimondo. You've never held elected office yourself. You've never run for elected office. So why should Rhode Islanders trust that you're ready to head to Congress? I would not be doing this if I did not think I was the most competitive Democrat in this race. I have tremendous experience across working in government and community to move things forward. I understand this district. I'm the oldest of five, grew up in Cranston, uh, went to Rhode Island College, run a small business here now, and live in Warwick. Um, and I am committed to meeting as many voters as possible, listening to what keeps them up at night, and earning their trust, and most importantly, earning their vote. This is a pretty crowded field already. Seven Democrats already officially in this race. Can voters be confident that your name is going to be on the ballot come the September primary, that you're going to see this thing through? Yes, 100% I will see this thing through. Um, like I just said, I, I believe I am the most qualified Democrat in this race and um, the most competitive Democrat, and I'll be there in, in September and, and even in November. You <laughs> mentioned that you live in Warwick uh, within the district. Yeah. Some of your opponents don't live in the district. It's not actually a requirement. Do you think that makes a difference? I am doing this because I love where I live, and my family is here. My parents still live in the house I grew up in. It means so much to me to have this honor to be able to run for the place that I grew up in and the community that I live in. Um, and I believe my community needs the best representa representation it can get in Congress, and I'm committed to doing that. Do you think it gives you a different perspective on the challenges that the second congressional district is facing because that you live there? Yes, 100%. Because I live there and because I have worked across government in the community, uh, in particular working for Congressman Jim Langevin, I understand this district. I know how, um, how tremendous this district is for its diverse opinions um, and, and landscape. On the fundraising front, fellow Democrat Seth Magaziner says he's raised roughly three quarters of a million dollars. Ed Pacheco, who's also in the race, told our Ted Nisi just last week on Newsmakers he's raised six figures. What should we expect from your fundraising? Uh, the fundraising is going really well. Um, may not have the most money right away out of the gate, but I plan to moving forward. And um, I have a reputation for working hard, and that's what I'm doing every day to meet as many voters as I can. And I'm committed to this race and the families of this district. Can you ballpark it for us? Are you in the six figure range yet? Getting there. It's all okay. good. <laughs> all right, less than 60 seconds, Joy. Number one priority if you're elected? Um, that's a great question. There are so many challenges facing our families right now. Um, I am committed to, um, in particular for personal reasons and just work, you know, family caregivers. They are a visible front line to our public health system as well as our health care system. And we need to do more to support them, to keep them home, to help them keep their loved ones home, and also by extension support the paid caregiver staff that, that works with them too. Make sure that they are valued and well compensated for the work that they provide to our families. So that is a top priority of mine. That's all the time we have. Democratic candidate for Congressional District 2, Joy Fox, thanks so much for being here. Thank you.
And of course, she joins six other Democrats who are officially seeking the seat so far. They include Omar Ba, Seth Magaziner, Cameron Moquin, Sarah Morgenthau, Michael Neary, and Ed Pacheco. On the Republican side, Alan Fung, Jessica De La Cruz, and Robert Lancia are also running for this seat so far. And looking ahead to tomorrow, when interim health director Dr. James McDonald will be joining us for our monthly interview with him. That's coming up tomorrow in your community focus.